Okay, you guys have been asking me to do this video, and since I had some downtime, I am going to give it to you. Today, I am doing a video with 25 of my favorite discontinued designer fragrances that I wish were brought back. So if you want to find out these 25 different fragrances, mostly for men, a few for women, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, we are talking about discontinued designer fragrances today. These are all designers. Some are a little more obscure designers than others. A lot of them are common. Some of the designers I don't talk much about because they used to do better fragrances, which you'll find out today. But all of them are designers and these are all discontinued and I wish they were brought back. So we're gonna find out what they are. But if this is your first time tuning into my channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Let's write get right to it. So the first one we're going to talk about is from the house of YSL. We've got four fragrances to feature today from YSL. YSL Reve Gauche in the canister bottle. It went from here to the square clear bottle. First it had a label on it, then it went clear, and now I believe it's completely discontinued. It's at least on, on the USA YSL website, it's not there. So this is a awesome barbershoppy fragrance in the canister. Uh, I don't know why they put it in the square bottle because the ladies version of this, the Reeve Gauche that my mom wore in the 70s is still in the canister bottle. But in the canister bottle is an awesome, awesome aromatic fougere barbershop fragrance featuring lavender, star anise, rosemary, geranium, patchouli, cloves, and oak moss. Launched in 2003, then in 2011 moved into that bottle and then and now it's sadly removed. Now I wish they bring this back because it's one of the best uh, men's designer fragrances. In fact, I would go to the extreme uh, or the extent of calling it a masterpiece. And a lot of these fragrances are definitely masterpieces, not all, a lot of them. And I'll tell you if I remember to tell you. But this one definitely is sadly gone. I don't know if, uh, is it because it just didn't do well for YSL or maybe it's the notes they're, they can't get, but um, it's a sad day that this one's completely gone. Anyway, YSL Reeve Gauche is an awesome fragrance that I wish that YSL would bring back in its original form. All right, this next one is a fragrance that I spoke about a lot at one time. In fact, I have a comparison video of this uh, because it was the anti-Tuscan leather. It's from the house of YSL. As I said, it's from their special collection of fragrances in the square bottles like this. Later, they discontinued these fragrances and they launched the Le Vestiaire collection. I can't remember what this collection was called. If you remember, please put a comment down below. So Noble Leather, as I said, is the anti-Tuscan leather. And what I liked about this one was it seemed a little more balanced and not so harsh and in your face. Um, I feel like the leather is smoother and suede-like. And I feel like the um, dried fruits note in here, which is dried fruits here in Tuscan leather, it's raspberry. But here you get the apricot stone fruit kind of a touch in here with the dried fruits. It's a nice balance of the leather and it just really made it easier to wear. There's a, a, a nice uh, a sweetness to it because you also have some vanilla, there's some amber in there as well, and then you've got a very sexy patchouli. A great combo. Sadly, they moved a, a lot of their fragrances in this collection into the Le Vestiaire collection, but this one never made it. And it was launched in 2013 and sadly discontinued like around five years later. Uh, I'm hoping they would bring it back. If you guys know anything about this, or if you have heard anything about them bringing it back, please let me know because it's pretty awesome. Anyway, Noble Leather from YSL. This next one is uh, a fragrance that a lot of you know about. It originally launched while Tom Ford uh, was working at YSL. He was only there for one year, I believe. I don't think he usually. I don't think he liked working with. Uh, why Yves Saint Laurent and I think this one was launched around his time too maybe a year after but this one is M7 in its original bottle and now it's called M7 Oud Absolu in the square bottle as I said like this uh, which Reeve Gauche was in now it's not and sadly I do want to say that I'm thinking that they're also discontinuing the M7 Oud Absolu as well. Um, I see something like Final on, on their website under Oud Absolu and their uh, Pour Homme, um, the YSL Pour Homme. Let me know if those are being discontinued because I'm fearing that they are. But this one, as I said, was launched around Tom Ford's time at YSL. It is an awesome, awesome designer Oud fragrance. One of the very first uh, designers to use Oud, Vetiver, Rosemary, Mandarin, Orange, Musk, and Bergamot. And what I like about this one 
one is the fact that um, they had the combination of the orangey note with the oud. It was a nice balance. Um, similar to the noble leather, it was a nice contrasty balance with that, you know, harsh leather with the fruity dried fruit notes. Here it is like that as well. I mean, you do have some rosemary and um, musk and uh, bergamot come in as well to kind of freshen up the fragrance, but it is a nice definitely a quality designer oud fragrance when this one was discontinued it was like all over the everybody was looking for a bottle and then of course they launched that oud absolute but a lot of people didn't like that one which i can see why because this was a pretty much a masterpiece right here anyway m7 from the house of ysl and last but not least this one was featured in my vintage and discontinued fragrances haul video with dahlia i did a few weeks back this is ysl's live jazz I don't, I don't have a current bottle of uh, Jazz, uh, well, I do have the current bottle of Jazz in the square bottle. That's what I'm referring to, the square bottles like this. There's a whole video I've done on the square bottles of men's fragrances which features YSL Pour Homme, Rive Gauche, M7, uh, M7 Oud Absolute, and then Jazz. So Jazz is now completely gone, I think. And also Pour Homme is going, and I think uh, M7 is going. But they never put Live Jazz on that collection. But Jazz and Live Jazz were amazing fragrances. Jazz came out in 88, 87 or 88, and 10 years later this came out in 98. But an awesome, awesome fragrance. This is like a fresher, citrus aromatic take on the original spicy fragrance. Mint, grapefruit, coriander, lemons, rhubarb, amber, cedar, nutmeg, vanilla. It's very, very fresh and refreshing, lemony fragrance. A wonderful fragrance. I wish they would bring this back and the original fragrance back in its original formulation because those fragrances are to die for. Anyway, when I'm wishing for them to bring them back and they're not going to listen to me by the way so don't get your hopes up. I'm hoping they are but I don't think they will. If they do bring them back, I would love them to be brought back in their original forms, like the way they smelled, not reformulated. And sadly, I think the reason why these get discontinued is because they, the, the regulations for specific notes under IFRA, they can't use them anymore. So when they remove those notes in a fragrance, they don't smell the same. So they have to kind of kill the fragrance or ax the fragrance. So that is the reason why we see a lot of discontinuation. So that's sadly probably will never get these back. Anyway, this next one is a fragrance that's targeted specifically to the woman, but I really love this one and sadly it's gone. Uh, it's um, from Tom Ford, it's Violet Blonde. And this one is a very, very buttery violet fragrance. It smells like violet the flowers, but it, you also get the violet leaf in there. There's lots of uh, kind of uh, ozonic and um, minerally kind of a um, smell in there of earthiness of the violet leaf note um, because um, it smells kind of like jelly-like gelatinous and I feel like the violet leaves have this like jelly-like quality in them. There's also suede in here which is a, a leather, there's orris butter, benzoin, jasmine, musk, pink pepper, vetiver, cedar. It's a great fragrance. Uh, this one along with, uh, sadly I don't have a Sahara Noir. I wish I I had a bottle of that one. I wish they would bring these back because they're pretty awesome fragrances that sadly are discontinued. This one is targeted to ladies, but I feel like it's very unisex for me that men can totally wear it. This is Violet Blonde from Tom Ford. Only Tom Ford in this list with four YSLs. That's five and 20 to go. Okay, this one fragrance was launched in 1990 from the House of Balmain. And Balmain, I don't know what they're doing with fragrances. I don't know if they're releasing anything new. I don't see anything new coming out. In fact, they should because I feel like I see a lot of stuff come up about Balmain and the Kardashians being friends with uh, the creative director behind that brand. So maybe they'll be launching some fragrances soon. But this one was sadly discontinued or I can't find any bottles anywhere. It's Balmain's Monsieur Balmain. And I was running out of my bottle about two years ago and then I went to buy a bottle and then I said, oh, whoa, what's going on? There's none. So, so I picked up a few testers and there's no, no none to be around. But this one, it's a great release launched in 1990 in, an, in a tubular bottle. Then they put it in a square bottle like this and it features lots of lemons. It's very citrusy, but bergamot, bitter orange, vetiver, ginger, mint, sandalwood. It's such a great smelling fragrance. It's a little minty. It's a little aromatic and lots of citruses. And so it's like a nice combo of like um, mint and lemons. It's almost like drinking a lemon mint tea because it's smells like mint in there and it's in there but it's a wonderful wonderful release sad it's gone um, I think it's not as good as the uh, longevity when it was in the, um, compared to the when it was in the tubular bottle with the square bottle but I feel like in the summertime it's a uh, very fresh and refreshing to wear so I'm hoping that they will bring this back 
we shall see. Anyway, this is Balmain's Monsieur Balmain. Let me know if you know this fragrance or any of the other fragrances I've spoken about so far. But this next one is from the house of uh, a Spanish house of Adolfo Dominguez. This is Azahara, this one right here. Sadly, this is nowhere to be found, and it's an awesome, awesome release that's perfect for the heat of the summer. In fact, this is also pretty uh, awesome in that heat of the summer, but this one, amazing. It's refreshing, like a heat quenching, like quench your thirst kind of a fragrance. This is uh, launched in 2002 from the Spanish design house of Adolfo Dominguez. Lots of orange blossom, pedigree, neroli, orange, woody notes. I feel like this is a lot lighter than the fragrances I featured in my video yesterday. I did my five uh, current uh, favorite Neroli Orange Blossom fragrances, but this one has uh, such a great performance when it's really hot and humid outside. It is very light. It acts light, but it comes alive with your body chemistry, your sweat, and all that good stuff. It's really, really awesome, and this is a house I don't speak too much about. I don't have too many of their fragrances. I only have one or two more from this house, but this one was a solid release. A great, great Neroli Orange Blossom. So this is Azahar from Adolfo Dominguez. So uh, Versace is a tough house for me. These days I just do not click with a lot of their fragrances but uh, I'm sadly but I used to love 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 their fragrances and two of their fragrances are some of my favorite fragrances in fact this and their collection of jeans based fragrances are amazing this is baby blue jeans Oh man, this was so good. Baby Blue Jeans was a very powdery lemony fragrance like it, it was almost like visualize your lemon fruit in a powder form and throwing it up in the air when you spray it and you know all of those sprinkles coming down on you that's how I, this uh, fragrance was to me it was amazing but it doesn't feature lemons it features lime musk vanilla bergamot mandarin orange iris sandalwood and i think it's the iris note that kind of adds the powdery touches to the fragrance and this is when Versace was doing, or Versace was doing some awesome fragrances because this along with the uh, black jeans green jeans I think red jeans also, and of course blue jeans I still have. They were all great fragrances, awesome releases, and uh, sadly they don't make great fragrances anymore. In fact, are you a fan of the House of Versace and do you like their fragrances? What they did before was amazing. Um, I have one more fragrance coming up from the House of Versace, but baby blue jeans was one of my favorite fragrances to wear back in the old days. Anyway, this next one is Versace Versus, this one right here. I featured this one in my uh, discontinued or vintage, vintage fragrances haul video recently. And this is um, an aromatic citrus spicy fragrance with featuring um, lots of lime. Once again, we got lime, lavender, lemon, rosewood, amber, vanilla, carnation, bergamot, and fir balsam. Very, very I guess the lavender kind of pops in this one. It's really prominent, but the contrast of the kind of like minty kind of uh, citrus note of the lime. I feel like lime has a spicy mintiness to, to the, the actual smell of it. And it's very prominent here. It kind of very complements that lavender because there's a little bit of a mintiness in here, but there's no mint. But lots of lemon, lots of uh, woody notes. And it was one of my favorite fragrances to wear. And I really enjoyed wearing this one. Uh, Versus, uh, they had a couple of different fragrances from Versus or Versus series uh, at, uh, at Versace. And towards the end of the 90s, they there was another Versus that was a clear bottle with a tube in it. I don't know if you guys remember, but I wore that one as well from the Versace Versus collection. Really, really loved it. But this was solid. This was an awesome release, and uh, I hope they would bring it back, but I doubt it. Anyway, Versace Versus is another awesome fragrance from the house of Versace, or Versace. This next one is probably a house you've never heard of, and in fact, I don't even know if they're making any fragrances anymore. I don't even know if this house is around. It's a designer house that is from the UK that is known for plateware and crystals and things like that. It's Asprey. I don't know. Do you guys know this house right here? Now, this was a fragrance I discovered late, um, not late, mid-2000s, um, and I immediately fell in love with it. I bought a bottle, and then I bought a backup bottle, and this is what's left of it. There's a little bit of juice in here, which I'm sure is turned because this is a very citrusy fragrance. This is called Purple Water. It's launched in the early 2000s. It's all about lemon, mandarin, orange, orange blossom, ginger, floral notes, basil. So it's aromatic and citrusy and fresh and there's a little bit of like a um, citronella kind of a smell in there I don't know if you guys know that smell and uh, almost like if you wear it around mosquitoes they're gonna kind of get away from you it did remind me of citronella a little bit but I kind of like that because I like the smell of citronella and I really love this purple water I don't know what they're doing this house is doing I don't think they're making any fragrances anymore but if you guys know about this house from the UK do let me know because uh, 
I'm hoping that they would bring this one back because it's a great, great Neroli Orange Blossom combo uh, fragrance. Anyway, Aspray Purple Water from the 2000s. Sadly, it's discontinued. All right, 10 down and 15 to go. Sorry, this is a longer video than normal, but with our current situation these days, I think uh, we have a lot of time. Hopefully you can stick around to watch the whole thing. But this next fragrance is from the house of Givenchy. Givenchy. This is Insensé. Givenchy Insensé. So this was a fragrance that came out in 1993 and immediately I fell in love with it. It had a very unique smell that I was not really used to of the fragrances around that time. It was aldehydic, it was also very aromatic and very floral. So the combination was really unique for me, especially for when it comes to men's fragrances. I ne never smelled anything like this before. Nowadays, I, I, I would smell things like this, but not from the designers, of course. This was very, very um, advanced for its time, I think. Um, it was a flop, too. Didn't really do very well. So this one has aldehydes, fir balsam, lily of the valley, magnolia, black currant, lavender. The fruitiness of the black currant added this unique twist to the fragrance and it was just a very lovely lovely wearing experience i love this one i bought a bottle back then and wore it and i it was finished and gone and then i couldn't find any more because it was discontinued um luckily i was able to find a bottle and i have one now but um i'm hoping that they would bring this back but i doubt they would bring this back because this would never be found in a current men's releases definitely in the niche world it would be but nobody uh, would release something like this currently in men's designer releases and Especially knowing that this was a flop when it came out for men's releases, it definitely wouldn't make it out these days. But it's phenomenal. If you know this one, let me know. I love this one. This next one was a fragrance I uh, rediscovered about five years ago, maybe four years ago, at Sephora's in Europe. Never saw it in the stores here. It's from a house called Van Cleef and Arpels. As soon as I discovered it at Sephora in France, and I was like, you know, I gotta get me a bottle. It smells so good. I looked it up, and it was at the discounters for about $20, $22, $21, somewhere around there. I immediately bought a bottle, and I was speaking quite a bit about this, but then all of a sudden, uh, it was just shelved. It was discontinued, and, uh, Prices went up to over $200. This is Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme, launched in 1978. It's very piney, and there's lots of rose, leather, oak moss, uh, lavender, carnation, musk. What an awesome release this is. Uh, I don't know what happened. Like Between that time and then, two years later, it was completely gone. Uh, it just... I guess they decided to just completely shelve it. But a wonderful release. It's very classic smelling. As I said, it's very piney, like it smells like a pine forest, and I think the oak moss is also very prominent here, mixed in with the rose. And the rose is also a very butch, masculine rose, not necessarily at all a feminine rose. So it's a very masculine fragrance. Powerhouse comes to mind with this one. A wonderful combination of notes, and it smells great. For me, I love it, but sadly it's discontinued, but I'm hoping they would bring it back. But you never know. They may, they might. Somebody might make another version of it, but if you have this fragrance or you can get your hands on it, do, because it's definitely an awesome, awesome release. This was a fragrance that my dad wore in the late 70s, early 80s. I never wore it. I actually was gifted at one time in the early 90s a bottle of Czar from Van Cleef and Arpels, which I enjoyed wearing. But this one, as I said, discovered on my travels. Really wonderful stuff. Anyway, Van Cleef and Arpels, Pour Homme from 1978. This next one is Balenciaga Pour Homme. Um, this one you heard about on my uh, vintage and discontinued fragrances haul video, but this one, phenomenal. I wish they would bring this one back. I doubt they would bring this back like this, this kind of fragrance these days. This wouldn't do well with the current uh, trend in designer fragrances because this one's all about patchouli. It's very spicy patchouli with lots of cinnamon, sandalwood, um, honey, sweetens things up. Curry, coriander in here uh, adds a little more uh, aromatic spiciness. Cedar labanum, phenomenal release. A masterpiece. I would call this a masterpiece. Just such a great, great fragrance. Um, it does, to me, it hints at Ligno from Jeroboam, which I just recently reviewed. Check out that review. I have a full bottle giveaway. If you uh, are a fan of this and you can't find a bottle, maybe look into that bottle, I mean, that fragrance, because that one I find a little animalic compared to this, but I feel like the fragrance wearing experience is very similar. But a wonderful release. Are you fans of Balenciaga Pour Homme? Let me know, put a comment down so I find out. So that one was from 1990. This next one is a ladies' target of fragrance, but I immediately fell in love with it because it features a dominant note of cumin like the cumin is so prominent and it was like 
I was gifted some samples, like a big box of samples. Somebody I knew just gave me a bunch of samples when I bought a fragrance. And I was like, you know, I don't know, this is for ladies, but I smelled it. I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is this fragrance? It's so awesome. The cumin is so aromatic and spicy, just really intoxicating. I'm talking about this one right here, Kingdom from the house of Alexander McQueen. This one was completely discontinued towards the end of the 2000s. Sad, sad, sadly, it was discontinued. But love, love wearing this one. The aromatic spiciness of the cumin is nicely juxtaposed with uh, patchouli, musk, rose, carnation, rhubarb, oak moss, neroli. It's a beautiful, sexy, uh, oriental, spicy fragrance, if that makes sense to you guys, but wonderful. Um, I have fans who are, I have friends who are major, major fans of this one and they have hoarded bottles and bottles of it. The bottle is also amazing, as you can see. And uh, this one actually I was gifting to my mom um, when it was uh, first launched. She loved this fragrance as well. Anyway, if you guys know this one, do uh, check it out. I mean, with the current trend or styles in the Alexander McQueen fragrances, I doubt they would bring this back but you never know because this is phenomenal. Anyway, this is created by Jacques Cavalier also, who is currently creating the fragrances for Louis Vuitton. Alexander McQueen Kingdom from 2003. This next one is the fragrance that got me into doing fragrance reviews. The story is, if you've been following me, you probably know this already, but on Thanksgiving day, back in about 2010, I got into an Uber and I was, you know, needing to go to a friend's house for Thanksgiving dinner. And I got in, immediately, the, the scent of this fragrance, <laughs> Lidge, L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Eau Extreme, got me. I was like, you know what? I was a little nervous to ask the guy. I didn't want to, like, you know, intrude or anything. But I said, no, I got to ask him. I got to find out what the heck this guy's wearing because he smells amazing. And this, this Uber uh, smells amazing because at the time... Um, Ubers were the black cars. They didn't have the, like the Uber, um, I don't know what they're called now, but they, they, it was all black cars back then here. It started in San Francisco and uh, it was like the guy was just giving me a ride in this amazing kind of like a big black car to uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner with this most intoxicating patchouli and star anise smell. And that's like, you know what, I got to ask him. I asked him, he, get, tra we tra he tried explaining to me what it is and I, I, I couldn't understand him. Um, and he, we exchanged phone numbers and then he texted me an image of this and then I finally had to hunt it down. Middle Eastern guy, um, was very friendly and he smelled great. And the rest is history because I tracked this thing down so quickly after that and I bought up a couple of backup bottles. Sadly, this is all I have left, all. But the phenomenal fragrance, it's, it was launched in the early uh, 2000s, somewhere around 2004. Uh, it features cacao, patchouli, star anise, citruses. It is very citrusy. Sandalwood, elemy, cedar, tea, jasmine, amazing scent, uh, intoxicating scent. It's the patchouli, once again, that does it for me. I searched for it here in San Francisco. All they had was the EDT. The, the one with the rims doesn't smell like the same, um, obviously. There's more, uh, uh, there's more cacao and patchouli in this one compared to the EDT. But a phenomenal release. It's currently available in their new bottle. Um, it doesn't smell as good as this. It does not. Um, it's close, but it's it's more close to the EDT. Al although it's almost like it's in between the ED current EDT and uh, the ED, uh, this one, the O Extreme. Anyway, this is Guerlain. Let's start the Guerlain Pour Homme Extreme. Awesome fragrance. If you don't know it, do check it out. Okay, we got one more Guerlain, and then next four after that are from one designer that I really love. This is Guerlain's Cologne Du 68. Now this one was introduced by, uh, to me by a fragrance community person I had met here in San Francisco. And we went to Neiman's and she said, you got to smell this one. And I smelled it, I immediately loved it. So right after that, I had to go buy a bottle. I bought a bottle and I just loved wearing it. I don't speak much about this one because it got discontinued right away. And what Guerlain did was re-released an EDP version of it for their La Art et La Matier collection, which doesn't smell very close to it to me, unfortunately. I really like this one, the freshness of this one. But this one is Cologne du 68, and the 68 is from their address, I think, on the Champs-Élysées of their 
store. Citruses, iris, sage, lime blossom or linden blossom, pedigree, orange blossom, rosemary, very aromatic, very citrusy, very floral, very powdery. So lots of citruses. Citruses are usually juicy for me, but it gets dry because they added the powderiness of the iris here, but it's an amazing smell. Citruses, the flowers, aromatic spices, and um, the iris together. It's a great, great concoction. Wonderful, wonderful release. Wish they would bring this back. As I said, it's currently available in EDP only in the Art at La Matia collection, but this version, amazing. All right, we're going to the house of Mugler. I've got four fragrances from Mugler. We had four from YSL, we have four from Mugler, and we're gonna start off right off the bat with a fragrance called B-Men, this one right here. So in 96, Mugler launched Amen, or first they called it Angel Men, then they called it Amen. Then in 2001, they launched a unisex fragrance called Mugler Cologne. And finally, in 2004, they launched another men's fragrance called B-Men, which to me is a flanker. A lot of people say it's not really a flanker. Yes, it is. To me, it has the DNA of Amen in here, but what they've done now is they've added spices, licorice, anise, patchouli, vanilla, leather, cedar, violet, vetiver, musk. Wonderful, wonderful release. If you like licorice or anise, and I'm not talking about licorice as in the black vines, I'm talking about real licorice, this is it right here. In fact, as you can see, this is the um, the bottle that you can actually open up and it'll put a cartridge in there instead. Because uh, I've had the rubber versions and then I've had the uh, flask versions. But I bought this in San Diego on a trip down there from, I think, Nordstrom's in San Diego. And um, I wore it there, loved it. And then I also took it with me to New York City for Christmas and uh, wore it there on Christmas. And it was the, the fragrance came alive in the winter. It was snowing there too, so it was a nice experience. But phenomenal release. I wish they would bring this one back. It's a great smell. Um, it's definitely the Mugler DNA with lots of licorice anise notes. Anyway, B Men, what a wonderful fragrance. One of my favorites from Mugler. So this next one is Mugler's Ultra Zest. The more recent release launched in. This one came out in 2014, I believe, yeah, 2014. And then it was shelved in 2018, or maybe even 2017. It was completely removed. They always call these like limited editions. I don't know if that's to get people excited or not. But this is this is a great, great flanker to the original. It has the DNA of the original Amen. But here we got like orangey notes. Blood orange, clementine, patchouli, vanilla coffee, tonka bean, ginger, cinnamon. There's some spiciness to it. It's fresh enough to wear in the summertime. It's uh, dense enough or like strong enough to wear in the wintertime. It's just a nice combo of the freshness and the heaviness of uh, what you would wear in the winter compared to what you were wearing in the summertime. And that blood orange note is really, really refreshing. It reminded me a little bit of Sunkist, which I don't drink. I haven't drank any of that stuff for a long time, but the smell of it kind of reminded me of that. Anyway, Mugler's Amen Ultra Zest is awesome. Wish they would bring that one back. So this next one uh, is Mugler's Pure Chili, Pure Chili but this is a Taste of Fragrance Pour Homme. So Mugler's Amen Taste of Fragrance was subtitled or called Pure Chili because it featured a, a dominant note of chili or very standout note of chili with coffee. And I think uh, this was actually a collection of limited edition fragrances from Mugler. They had a woman's version. They had another version for women. I think they had a few versions for women and they had one for men that focused on food items. And here they were focusing on the chili. That's why it was called Pure Chili. Um, it's it's a, taking that Amen DNA into that direction of the food. And it was a lovely, lovely fragrance. And this one actually was a blind buy. Nobody carried it here near me or maybe Nordstrom did and I couldn't find it there. But I ordered it and I brought it and you know, I, you know, I got the package I wore it. I was like, wow, what the hell is this? It smells so good. It smells so wonderful, very sexy, very, very classy, very niche styling because it was very, very modern for the time. I loved I loved it. And it was reminding me of a candle I had from Hotel Coast, um, Yunks. I don't know if you guys know that brand, but I had bought a candle from um, Lucky Scent from Hotel Coast and I loved that candle and it just kind of reminded me of that candle a little bit, but wonderful, wonderful stuff. If you guys know this one, if you owned it, uh, I know, uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but maybe you haven't tried it. So let me know what you think, but I'm hoping they would bring this back. I'm praying. I don't think they're going to let, you know, do anything for me, but I don't think they're going to bring back anything for me. All right. The last one from Mugler is this one called Pure Queer, uh, Pure Leather. This is a men pure queer leather, caramel, patchouli, coffee, honey, vanilla, mint, and tonka. So it's very unique concoction, but a very, very pungent leather fragrance. It's, the leather is really in your face, and I feel like 
this is probably the strongest, more intense Mugler Amen flanker that I've smelled or put my nose on. It was really animalic too. That leather is very, very animalic and dense. Really, really strong. So a little goes a long way with this one. But you know what? The leather with the caramel is a nice con uh, contrast. A nice, sweet, uh, lighter note with that really heavy leather note. Then throw in the patchouli that's typically known for Amen fragrances. Um, coffee, honey. You do pick up a little bit of the mint too. Wonderful release. Sadly, a little goes a long way with this one. It was not one of my most favorites, but I really enjoyed wearing it when I first got it and I just couldn't get enough of it. I have a little bit of the juice left in here, but uh, it's definitely a great flanker that Mugler did. Anyway, that's my Mugler fragrances and I think we have five more to go. All right, we do have five more to go. I shouldn't say I think we have five more to go. Definitely we have five more to go. And we're gonna go to the house of Dior and this is Fahrenheit Absolute. This one is a awesome, awesome flanker to the original Fahrenheit and this one was taking Fahrenheit into a more Middle Eastern oriental direction. You've got incense, you've got myrrh, violet, oud, so smoky incense, resinous myrrh, violet is typical with the Fahrenheit fragrances and then adding that oud. So wonderful, wonderful concoction. It's really, really awesome. It's just very, very unique. It's very smoky, it's very resinous and woody, but then you still pick up the DNA, a little bit of the DNA, not a lot. It's there. You can you can smell it. And smoke comes in first. The uh, resinous myrrh comes in for a second, and then the, the that violet in the background comes in. It's so good. Sadly, this became a little shadow after I ended up getting uh, Le Parfum, um, and I was like really enjoying that one at that time, but. Coming back to this, I think this was a very, very solid release. I think by the time the Le Parfum came out, this one was discontinued, but this one was launched in 2009, and I'm hoping they would bring it back. I believe this was Eau de Toilette. I'm hoping they would bring back an EDP or a Parfum version of Dior Fahrenheit Absolute. Anyway, that's awesome from Dior. One more from Dior. Sadly, this one is currently available in a new form, but when it came out, I bought a bottle, and I was like, this is not my dad's Eau Sauvage. This is freaking amazing. This is... Eau Sauvage Parfum from 2012. As I said, this is available in the 2017 version, but why did they do it? Um, again, I think it's because of the whole Ifra thing. They brought it back because maybe it was really popular and they didn't want to can it because they had to remove a specific item or note in the fragrance. So they gave us 2017 version. Um, that's probably what happened. Otherwise they would have completely canned it like this one. Or maybe this just was a flop, I don't know. But this is a phenomenal release. Awesome release. Back in 2012 when I first got it, I did a first impressions on the old channel and I was like going gaga over it. This compared to the new one is not as good, but the new one is really, really close. So don't, don't, don't dismiss that one. Definitely check it out if you like it. But this one focuses on lots of myrrh, lots of vetiver, lots of bergamot. It's those notes that they're focusing on, but there's a lot more that happens with it. But it's amazing. Very, very long lasting. And when it's called Parfum, it's the pure perfume. When it's called Eau de Parfum, it's the less, less, less perfume oil compared to the Parfum version. And then of course, Eau de Toilette is less than Eau de Parfum and vice versa. Anyway, this is Eau Sauvage Parfum, amazing stuff. Check it out if you don't know it, if you can get your hands on it. Moving on to a fragrance house that I don't sp speak much about now, but I did on the old channel. In fact, when I bought this fragrance, I was like gaga over this fragrance. And I had done videos around this one, featured it in videos. This is Mabusan M Generation. Great looking bottle, huh? I think this is completely discontinued. Um, this was focusing on incense with Sichuan pepper, so it was spicy, guyac wood, ginger, cinnamon, labdanum, very resinous and balsamic smoky fragrance. Very, very woody also. This was awesome. This was a really, really awesome fragrance. I turned this one on to a lot of folks that really enjoyed this fragrance from 2010, and I think it was discontinued around by the time 2015 rolled around. But it's, it's awesome. If you can get your hands on this one, it's great. It's very woody, it's very intense. Doesn't perform as, as intense as it smells, but it's pretty awesome. It doesn't really have to, because it was pretty inexpensive when I bought it. This is Mabusan M Generation. In fact, I think they still have these bottles, but not the specific, this fragrance. The only thing I hated about it is M Generation. I didn't really care for that name, but oh well. Can't really help that it was named M Generation. All right, this next one is a fragrance from the House of Lanvin. It's a fragrance I had discovered in France, but then I was in Italy a year after that, and I spent a, um, 
a whole month in Italy and I discovered it towards the end of 2011 and I really, really ended up enjoying it because I was going to perfume shops and I was seeing them pop up in the different perfume shops and I finally, I was in the city of Siena and I ended up at the perfume shop again and I said, you know, I'm buying this one. This is L'Envan Avant-Garde, an amazing fragrance that I had used to speak a lot about on the old channel and uh, really, really loved as a fragrance. This one features beeswax, tobacco, benzoin, lavender, cardamom, amber, nutmeg, black pepper, very spicy. It kind of reminded me a little bit of tobacco vanille, a little bit of La Nuit la, uh, de la Homme. Uh, La Nuit de la Homme, uh, I guess the cardamom in here reminded me, and the spices in the tobacco vanille reminded me of this fragrance. But this was a, a very dry experience. It's very dry and dusty compared to like syrupy molasses -y. So sadly, the performance of, of this one is not as good, but man, it was such a great fragrance. A lot of people love this one, and I really love that bottle too, as you can see right here. A great looking bottle. And a great fragrance. Sadly, it's discontinued. I think you can still buy bottles out there of this one. I think I saw that they were still available, but they were pricey. Anyway, this is Lanvin Avant-Garde from 2011. Awesome fragrance. Last but not least, we are ending this video with a fragrance that was um, one of my favorite fragrances of a house that's very obscure. It's an Italian house that is known for, uh, um, I guess, not necessarily clothing, but more for like luggages and uh, those kind of accessories, bags and backpacks and you know, I don't know, whatever you call them, those things. So it's a Mandarina Duck and this is a Mandarina Duck Black Extreme. And Mandarina Duck Black Extreme is a flanker for the original black and the original black is good, still around. This one was amazing for what it was. Came in the EDP form, the original is Eau de Toilette, and it acted like a pure perfume. A wonderful smell. Launched in 2014, and sadly, I think it was discontinued in 2018. Featured vanilla, tonka, sandalwood, clementine, bergamot, orange blossom, and guess what it reminds me of? Uden from Zerzhov. If you like that fragrance, you can get your hands on this one, get it, because this is really awesome. Probably it's very expensive now, and probably nowhere to be found. I do have a comparison video of this with Zerzhov's Uden, check it out. Awesome stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. Sadly, it's gone. I wish they would bring it back because it smelled great. It performed great. On me, I just loved wearing it. It was one of my favorites. Anyway, Mandarina Duck Black Extreme. And that brings an end to the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching today on this longer than normal video. Let me know what some of your favorite discontinued fragrances are. Um, I do know a lot of uh, the traditional brands, but there are some obscure brands like Mandarina Duck or Lanvin or um, Amabusan or even something like um, brands like um, Adolfo Dominguez and Balenciaga who have fragrances, but they're not like the ta common or typical designer fragrances that I'm used to. So let me know if you have any that I should check out and or even if they're not even discontinued that you think they might be and the potential to get discontinued because I like to discover fragrances like that from the smaller houses. Like recently I did a video for Mustache by the house of Rocha. Um, great fragrances. Those are awesome from a very uh, small house, um, kind of sort of obscure, not very typical. So let me know if there are anything that is either discontinued or are not discontinued so I can check out. And also let me know, are you a fan of these fragrances? Did you at one time enjoy them or do you still have them? Put some comments down so that I can find out. If you have any questions or uh, other questions or comments, please do list below. Otherwise, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.